Hi, so, so today we will begin this uh, host pathogen interaction and uh, this is in real sense, uh, this is host pathogen interaction and today in this session I will discuss about the host virus interaction and their co-evolution. So, try to understand this is a, the viruses also keep on evolving and the host is also keep on evolving. Okay. And today I will give you uh, a few, uh, few of these concept and I will also discuss one very uh, landmark experiment which was uh, performed that, uh, uh, that, that shows that this viruses and host both are co-evolving. Initially the virus is extremely fatal and uh, after few years it turned to be uh, less fatal. Okay. So, let us begin with uh, this uh, session and uh, before going to more details, I would like to explain what is the virus infection. Okay. So, virus infection is uh, uh, simply transfer of viral genome into the host cell. Okay. As you know very well that uh, Viruses are obligatory parasite. Okay, when they don't have a host, they are non-living. Okay, and as soon as they come in contact with the living host or living cell, then they replicate and then uh, they hijack the host cellular machinery and then they make a copy and then replicate and then that cause the disease. Okay. And how you define the disease? That is a, a little interesting. Okay, let the virus replicate. Okay, it's it's no problem. Let let it replicate. But when they replicate in higher number, okay, they change the physiology of uh, host. They perturb the homeostasis of the host. Okay where this problem arise, then we start defining it as a disease. Okay. When they change the physiology, that result to the deviation of vitals. Okay. Vitals means uh, the replication is so much that now they are changing the physiological parameter, the vital parameters. Okay. For example, they can make a more, they, they can skew the body temperature, they can change the physiology in respiratory system, okay, that will start producing more mucus and all those things. Okay. They will hamper the oxygen retention capacity of the blood. Okay. So, these are the, uh, these are the vitals. Okay. So, when this replication is so much, then they will change the vital signatures and then we start calling as a viral disease. Okay. So, this is clinically visible and uh, the patient or the individual experience all these uh, uh, changes in physiology. Okay. And this is happening, why? Because of viral replication, because virus is replicating too much. And when they replicate, it is obvious that they are taking our resources. Okay. You know that they hijack, so it means they are taking our resources and making their own copies. And due to that, the problem arises. Okay. So, there are variety of uh, kind of infection. So, infection as I told you, it is a just transfer of genome into the cell. Okay. And when this transfer of genome is taking into the uh, genome is taking place, then the cell has mainly three kind of responses or this genome will cause three kind of uh, effects. 
okay one could be productive means when this genome is transferred into the living cell or the host cell at that time they will start replicating making a more copies okay so that we call it as a productive okay productive infection it could be abortive okay okay genome is there but somehow the host uh, response is in such a way that this is this genome is somehow degraded or removed or something or this genome containing cells were eliminated okay so that we call it as a abortive infection okay another is latent active uh, latent infection so when this genome is transferred into the uh, host cell okay then genome is present in such a way that cell will not experience any kind of infection they are somehow evade the 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 sensing mechanism of uh, host cell okay they remain in the cell okay either they will replicate extremely slow or if this is not needed then they will just sit in the cell and wait for right time right time means when there is a change in homeostasis of the host or somehow the defense mechanism is little hampered by some or other mean there could be a several means by which the immune system can be perturbed then this will reactivate and cause the productive uh, infection or then that will cause the symptom or disease one very good example is hiv hiv is something like that okay when they infect the host will not know and for quite long time they are present in latent form in pro viral form the genome is integrated into the host genome everything is very nicely hijacked okay uh, nicely hijacked of this host system okay so they will go slowly replicate and then they make a it's a retrovirus you know that so this makes a uh, rna to dna and this dna will integrate into the host genome and they will they will just lie in the in the cell okay and when there will be a some perturbation then this will make the more copies of viruses okay so this is a very good example of latent uh, infection and then there will be a reactivation so viral pathogenesis patterns are uh, there are several kinds okay here you can see that uh, there is a acute infection so the virus which is infecting the host cell and replicating in very high number okay and that immediately uh, affect the vitals of the host so we or sometime it affect very severely okay that may cause the fatality so we call it as a acute infection there is a similar term known as chronic or persistent infection so here the host immune system also learned how to control this virus to some extent okay and there will be a virus in the cell but it will be not so much that it will drastically affect the vitals or vital signatures so we call it as a chronic infection okay the persistence of this uh, nucleic acid uh, will be there there will be a continuous replication sometime they will remain in latency sometime there will be a reactivation there will be episode of uh, 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 change in vitals okay another is latent infection which i have already explained you there will be a the genome will remain in the cell and when there will be a right situation then that will 
reactivate okay there is a progressive infection okay there is when the virus infects the host cell initially there will be a very high intensity of a, a change in vital and that result to the uh, severe damage to the host okay but after some time this this replication will go down and then there will be a progressive and a steady and progressive increase in viral infection initially the host will uh, overcome this infection okay but later on the virus will slowly and steadily progress okay so that we call it as a progressive infection chronic or persistent infection it's uh, i have explained so there will be a, some kind of uh, um, arrangement between virus and host its arrangement means uh, virus is also not able to uh, overtake the host immunity and immunity is also not able to uh, take over this virus okay so there will be a, some equilibrium stage where the virus will be also there and immunity will be also there and the change in vitals are not so significant it's it's a persistent kind of thing okay so we call it as a chronic or persistent infection there could be a failure to clear all evidences of infection the virus is a uh, uh, sometime very smart some in some cases they will disappear from the system okay for example the virus is infecting a uh, uh, say epithelial lining okay so after there is a high peak of infection they cause severe damage to the epithelial lining and then they will reach to the blood and suddenly this will disappear why there could be several reason one is that they somehow gain the access in neuronal system which is which is having a blood brain barrier okay and either they will present over there okay or they will uh, they will be hiding from the immune system uh, and they will be present in some uh, some place where there will be a not so active immunity in so they will be not generally present in 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 blood or epithelial cell as i explained you that if the virus has a tropism to the epithelial cell or they are infecting to the epithelial cell then initially they will be present in epithelial cell they will replicate more in number they will cause the severe problem but suddenly this will disappear they may hide somewhere okay however we don't know what uh, precisely is going on and what is the significance of this okay because if it is hiding and not causing disease then what is its meaning but if you see in philosophical way then it is uh, it is a very good equilibrium stage it's a, like a um, you live and i live something like that okay it's a, it's a, like a virus is a, basically a, not killing the host if it will kill the host then virus cannot also survive right so this is a very good uh, arrangement kind of thing okay so this is all about the viral pathogenesis here i i would like to say that when there is a infection to the host okay then the outcomes are not always same here i am just showing one simple experiment here you have a black color syngenic mice okay same genotype is same same age same sex everything is same okay and you are infecting this group of mice by particular virus here you can see there is a syringe i am depicting the infection and the stars are viruses so when you do the experiment the outcome is always quite different i will explain you why here you can see that okay one mice is severely affected another is just moderately affected some may be not at all affected so the different color i just wanted to depict as a severity of infection if you 
see the dark brown that is more severely affected. Yellow means just a bit, green is almost nothing and the gray color mice is almost no effect. Okay? So, why it is like that? So, that is very interesting to understand. Okay? I will explain you, this is happening because of uh, the infection process, although we have, a, we have controlled everything, age, sex, everything is same, virus is same. Okay? Although infection is a deterministic step, however, it is full of a stochastic event, I will explain you, which contribute to the real variability to the outcome of infection. Okay? Let me explain what is this stochastic event. So, stochastic event means the, it is a random event. Okay? So, when you introduce the virus in these uh, animals in same way, you have introduced the virus in same way, absolutely same protocol, everything. So, when you do this thing, then it is a very random process. When you inject the virus, maybe it will go in such a way in some cases, it will be severely hampered uh, the, the viral replication in some cell, in, in some case. In another case, it will supportive to the virus infection. Okay? So, it is a highly random process. I will explain you much better in, with, uh, uh, in a subsequent slide. Uh, over there, I have uh, some schematic. Okay? Just try to understand, it is a highly random process. For example, this virus is uh, having a more infectivity in epithelial cell, but not in muscle cell. Okay? So, when you introduce the virus, in one case, it will go more in, uh, it will infect more in epithelial cell, but in another case, it will, uh, this virus will go more in the muscle cell. For example, it is a very random and uh, uh, arbitrary example. Okay? So, in case of epithelial cell, it will cause more severity. If it is going in muscle cell, it is causing less severity. So, you can understand there is a huge variation. It is just I tell you the cell type. There could be a signaling, there could be a different things. Okay? So, due to this huge variability, the outcome will be also uh, quite variable. Okay? So, here I am trying to explain you the virus, species, individual host, everything is different. Although it is a syngenic mice, genetically same, maybe in some mice the metabolism is in different stage uh, and all those things. Okay? So, there is a huge variability. Okay? And these, uh, these interplay of these factors, the virus, the host factor, the viral factor, all those things result to the uh, different uh, disease outcome okay, or infection outcome. So, here I am just uh, showing you one, one schematic. Here you can see that I am, uh, it is just a model, try to understand. So, virus, when I am giving the virus to the host. Okay? So, here you can see that virus itself is a it is a, it's a mixture of genetically variable. Okay? I will explain you why it is genetic variable. You know that viruses replicate using the polymerase. Okay? And most of these virus polymerases, they do not have a correction uh, ability, proof reading. We, technically, we call it as a proof reading. They do not have a proof reading mechanism. And if it is there, it is not very, uh, very good. Okay? So, that is why when virus infect the host cell, then they are keep on varying. So, the, this is a property of virus. Okay? So, they will be keep on varying. Okay? And that is why we use one term. Here you can see that there is a term known as quasi-species. Okay? It is a mixture of virus. It is not one kind of virus. Okay. Here that I have de depicted in this uh, schematic, this is a mixture of virus. So, when you inject into the host, 
here you try to understand what is bottleneck. So, bottleneck is nothing, it is a basically a different, uh, different resistance, okay. Bottleneck means resistance, resistance means it could be immune resistance, it could be cellular resistance, there is a huge kind of uh, uh, immune resistance, okay. So, these are the bottlenecks. So, when you introduce, then maybe one uh, this quasi mixture will one one kind of virus will follow another pathway another um, kind of virus although it is same but it is different genetically different okay that will follow another uh, another uh, route okay and in that route there will be a different kind of bottlenecks okay there there are different kind of resistance so that's why the outcome will be different okay so, here uh, I have a much more uh, refined uh, thing. So, here you can see that this is a quasi uh, species of virus, both are virus, same same virus if you uh, if you want to say, but they are different, genetically different, okay. And this is a host, there is a host gene, this virus will interact with host gene 1, host gene 2, 3, 4, like that, okay, 5, okay. So, there will be a huge variation, let us uh, take it this host gene may be cytokine, some cytokine network, there could be some epigenetic factor, viral factor, timing for various infection and defense event, ok. So, due to this, the outcome will be very much different, ok. Now, you can understand that uh, when there is a uh, any any infection, not it is just, it is not for any particular infection when you, when the individual is infected with SARS-CoV-2, someone, although we all are human, of course, there is a lot of genetic variation, okay, but still we are all human, but some human or some individual, they show different severity and some individual are just uh, very healthy, right. So, although here there is a one, uh, uh, one very big variable is there, the human genetics is very different. But here I am talking about the same genetic animal, okay. But the outcome will be very much uh, different, okay. This we observe in our experiment. When we conduct the experiment with mice, we, we get uh, this kind of variable uh, or variation, okay, in, in the result, okay. So, now I will talk about uh, what is this features of uh, pathogen and virus, why they, they these guys uh, cause disease, okay. Because virus is a non-living entity or even a pathogen is a uh, another, for example, bacteria, they are, although they are living, but they need to survive. So, what is the aim of any species? The aim of a species is continuity of a species. They want to they want to replicate, they want to make their own copy, okay. They want to reproduce, okay, and make their own copy in order to continue their life. The continuity of life is the key aim of uh, any living entity, okay. So, so pathogen or viruses, they survive and multiply in appropriate host. They want to, uh, they want to live. So, in order to live, they have to infect. So, this is the aim of uh, any pathogen or virus and how it is possible? So, human or any animal, they are very good, uh, uh, good source of uh, food, okay. There will be a good, uh, the, the host is uh, nutritionally rich, okay, and compatible niche in the host, okay. So, this is a very compatible environment for the, the pathogen. So, you try to see from pathogen point of view, do not see from host point of view, ok. So, if you see the pathogen, they just want to live, ok. And in order to live, they, they infect the host, means human or animal. And then in order to, when they grow more, then, then that causes the disease, ok. It is not intention of pathogen to kill the host, okay. I, I will show you, there is a one very beautiful experiment, okay. So, 
they can replicate using host resources the nutrition and all those things they can colonize on the host so we are basically house for the for the pathogen try to understand from pathogen point of view they want to live they want to replicate they want to colonize okay so but host is always uh, having a defense mechanism okay they the innate immune system and adaptive immune system they we don't want that they should grow on us okay so avoid and subvert uh, or circumvent the host innate and adaptive immunity they develop all those weapon but the pathogenic factors okay so these pathogenic factor is uh, needed to the pathogen in order to survive in the host so it's a very close battle between uh, the pathogen and the host okay we don't want they should live and they want to live because they cannot survive anywhere so they have to okay so try to understand so strategy for uh, uh, pathogen and uh, viruses are uh, so overall aim of the pathogen is not to kill the host okay because if they will kill then they will not replicate okay so they always want in a equilibrium position okay so if they will kill uh, for example if there is an infection and that will immediately kill the host okay so what will happen in that situation they cannot replicate so then those pathogen has a capacity they hoop to the new healthy host as quickly as possible in order to again the aim is continuity of life okay so this is a a little phys philosophical view of uh, pathogen and host okay now i will show you uh, this uh, virus host co -ev evolution there is a disease known as myxomatosis caused by myxoma virus in rabbit okay this virus is causing a benign disease not so dangerous okay in south america rabbit however when this virus means uh, in, in the rabbit uh, from south america they will live happily with this there will be no problem absolutely no problem okay but if this virus infect the european rabbits okay then that will cause severe fatality about 99.4 to 99.8 rabbits will die for example if you have 100 uh, rabbits european rabbits and these rabbits are infected by this virus then they quickly die most all will die okay so so there is a uh, experiment people it's it's a very old and but very beautiful experiment so what they have done they have uh, 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 this is a practical example also it was happened okay um, after a year it caused so initially there is a 99 percent fatality but if they keep on infecting then the fatality is reduced it's about 90 percent in 1951 okay the next year and subsequently it came at equilibrium stage only 30 percent death was uh, uh, there okay and this 30 percent death remain show very mild and moderate uh, disease they don't cause very severe disease okay so here you can see the data okay you can you can understand this uh, there is a virulence grade this is more than 99 percent fatality if the grade is one if the grade is 2 then 95 to 99 percent if the grade is 3 like uh, 70 to 95 percent like that okay you can you can go through that but overall outcome of this experiment is that uh, initially there will be a massive uh, uh, fatality and this fatality will reduce with a subsequent infection okay here you can see that uh, how how it is uh, it is happening so number of epidemic uh, here you can see uh, there is a initially there is a uh, in first epi epidemic uh, there will be a lot of fatality about 90 percent okay and very few had a mild disease but most of them died 
in second you can see that the fatality is reduced and at towards end at uh, seventh epidemic uh, it is uh, just uh, 30 percent fatality okay and there is a 30 percent individual they developed a mild disease so this is a uh, i want to tell this philosophy that uh, pathogen does not want to kill the host because host is a house, host is a food, host is everything. Okay? But initially when they come, then they cause the fatality in order to show their, uh, means uh, some, some, somehow they are, uh, it is a not good, they cause a lot of fatality, it is not good. So that is why they come in equilibrium stage. Generally, they cause fatality when they jump from one species to another species. In, in this experiment also, you have seen that this virus is li living very happily in South, in, 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 in South African uh, American uh, rabbits. Okay? But as soon as they come to the European, they 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 cause the fatality and after a while uh, after several years they reach to the equilibrium stage okay so the take home message is or conclusion from these uh, work is uh, so rabbit develop the resistance so rabbit also developed some resistance they develop some mechanism in order to clear this virus infection Virus also made changes to reduce the virulence because if it will cause more virulence, then he will the virus will not have a host in order to replicate to make their copies. Okay, but it did not change to a virulent virus. They did not change. It's a completely virulence was not zero, but they they reduce the virulence. Okay, causing benign disease as in South America rabbit. Okay? Virulent virus is a disadvantage that what I was explaining disadvantage compared to the avirulent or less virulent virus. Okay? So, more virulent is not good for virus. Okay? Why? Because they kill the host rapidly resulting less time for natural transmission. Okay. So, if they will kill very quickly, they will not get another host, quickly they will not get another host. Okay. So, that is why there is a, uh, it is it's a disadvantage. Yes. There is a, some example that uh, uh, some of the disease which, which we can see in modern world also, uh, they, they, some of the, some of the infection is extremely fatal. Okay. Why? Because they jump from one species to human. For example, HIV. HIV came from chimpanzee. Okay? It, it, HIV is basically present in chimpanzee and then this virus hooped to the human. Ebola virus. Okay? They came from fr fruit bat. Nepa virus. This also came from fruit, uh, fruit bat. Influenza, which caused a massive pandemic in 1918. Okay? This virus uh, basically came from uh, aquatic birds. Okay? And you know very well that uh, the SARS-CoV-2, the SARS-CoV-1 is also came from uh, some wild cat from China. Okay? The name of cat is Seawit cat. So, they changed the affinity for angiotensin converting enzyme 2. There was a 2 mutation. There is a one very beautiful paper. If you have a extra interest, you can take a look. Uh, it was published in cell. I do not remember the year. They reported that. So, initially they were infecting the seaweed cat, the wild cat in China. Okay? So, this virus, they made a 2, two mutations which which changed the two amino acid and then this, this SARS-CoV gained more affinity to the human angiotensin converting enzyme. Okay? And then that was that caused the fatality. Fortunately, at that time it was controlled. Okay? And after that, you know the SARS-CoV-2. It is also considered that this came from uh, 
some some wild animal okay from china i i don't know precisely so so here you can see that when the virus jump from one species to another species then they cause the fatality okay so this is all about the host virus uh, uh, interaction and coevolution and uh, with this i will stop here and in next session i will discuss about the innate immune response against the viruses okay thank you